This is the strongest creature in the world until he got whooped by a 19 year old. But before that, Kaido ruled over his empire with an iron fist, commanding over 20,000 members and having some of the strongest officers in the series. Starting off, 100 Beast Kaido is the governor general of the Beast Pirates. He is an overwhelming force whose existence is largely based on Darwinism, the belief that the strong survive and the weak will fall. And that is exactly how the Beast Pirates are structured. No matter what race, belief, or goal goals you have, if you're strong, Kaido respects you. But to understand why Kaido thinks this way, we have to go back 59 years ago to the Vodka Kingdom. Kaido is an Oni, a rare type of human with thick skin and horns. Due to his special attributes, Kaido became the best soldier of his kingdom at the young age of 10. Since the Vodka Kingdom had to raid other nations for money, battle is all that Kaido knew. But with violence comes betrayal, and eventually, Kaido's own nation sold him to the government as their heavenly tribute. But being the monster that he is, Kaido easily said fuck that and was rewarded a bounty of 70 million. Kaido would get captured multiple times after this, but it was only because he wanted food. In fact, he's been captured 18 times in his life and was sentenced to death 40 times. But when Kaido was to be hanged, the chain broke. When he was to be beheaded, the blade shattered and when he was to be impaled, the spears snapped. Kaido is one of, if not the most durable creature in the One Piece world. He may not be the strongest, but when you can only be damaged by the top six in the verse, that's saying something. Speaking of those top six, Kaido would eventually be recruited by Whitebeard into the Rocks Pirates, a crew consisting of Whitebeard, Big Mom, Shiki, some other big names that I don't care about, and Rocks, Roger's greatest foe. Among them, Kaido was considered an apprentice, and throughout his time with Rocks, Kaido would build a sibling-like relationship with Big Mom, who actually saved his life. She did this by giving him the Uo Uo no Mi, model Seryu, a devil fruit that allows Kaido to turn into a fucking dragon as if he wasn't overpowered enough. However, the Rocks Pirates would not hold for long as their teamwork was ass. They were defeated and disbanded at God Valley. After the fall of Rocks, Kaido kept building a reputation for himself in the Grand Line. The actual formation of the Beast Pirates wouldn't come until years later when he recruited his first mate, a Lunarian. Lunarians are basically fire angels on steroids, and for this reason, Kaido recruited the individual named Albert. But then he was like, no, your name is King now. And that's how the Beast Pirates were formed. During this time, Kaido would have a daughter named Yamato as well. But then he was like, no, you're my son now. And that's how an abusive relationship is formed. Kaido would go on to invade the land of Wano and claim it as his territory. However, 10 samurai weren't really happy about that, Wano being their home and all. One of those samurai, named Odin, was one of the only people to actually mortally wound Kaido, a feat thought impossible at the time. However, Odin got distracted, and in a moment of weakness, he was swiftly defeated. Now, all of these shenanigans, including the Yamato stuff, would come back to bite Kaido in the ass later, but we'll get to that. In the meantime, the Beast Pirates kept building up, from mad scientists to former CP9 agents. But after seeing all of his contemporaries die in a glorious way, Kaido wanted the same. That is why Kaido's goal is to one day bring about a war that will throw the world into chaos. This will not only bring about the end of society, but the end to his life as well. To do this, he had to build up an insane force with the most powerful creatures on the planet, which brings us to the Beast Pirates themselves. The Beast Pirates consist of over 20,000 members and were allied with other organizations. As stated before, the crew's hierarchy is built entirely on strength. The lead performers, or the All-Stars, are the three strongest members of the crew right under Kaido himself. They consist of King, the second strongest right under Kaido, Queen, one of the best scientists in the world, and Jack, who despite being a fruit user can still survive underwater due to him being a fishman. Below the All-Stars are the Toby Ropo. They consist of two teenagers, a former CP9 agent, bad bitches, and former captains of pirate crews. Under the Toby Ropo are the headliners, but to talk about them, we need to get into the main focus of the Beast Pirate. To achieve his goal, Kaido built up a crew of powerful fruit users. All of the top officers, the All-Stars, the Toby Ropo, 
All of them have rare Zoan Devil Fruits. But it doesn't stop there, as even the lower ranking soldiers use artificial Devil Fruits called Smiles. Smile Fruits have a 1 in 10 chance of giving their user power. If you're not lucky, however, you will receive no power with a permanent smile on your face. It doesn't matter what pain or emotion you go through, you will smile. This actually brings us to the three core groups of the Beast Pirates. The Waiters, those who are waiting for a Smile Fruit, the Pleasures, those who were unlucky with their fruit, and the Gifters, those who were granted Zoan powers. To go back to the Headliners, they're basically just the strongest Gifters who command their own division. This is off topic, but I mean like, to me, Kaido only having a crew of fruit users has seemed so weird because if you fight on water in the One Piece world, you're done buddy, like it's over. Even King has a pterodactyl devil fruit and he can already fly, like what's the point of that? On the topic of how the smiles were actually acquired, Kaido had an alliance with Doflamingo, who is not only a badass in his own right, but also a broker for all sorts of exotic weapons. Kaido also had an alliance with Orochi Kurozumi, which gave him access to all the samurai of Wano. Well, the ones that liked Orochi, because he's a pretty repulsive person in his own right. With all of those alliances in mind, the Beast Pirates had a force of over 30,000 members. And finally, at their height, the Beast Pirates were partnered with the Big Mom Pirates. If this partnership was continued properly, then their combined force would be the strongest military power in the world, no question. However, this force was swiftly defeated in an event known as The Raid of Onigashima. Remember all the samurai stuff that I mentioned earlier? Well, yeah, that finally caught up to Kaido. 20 years ago, Kaido took complete control of Wano by defeating Odin and all of his vassals. However, the vassals were transported 20 years into the future by Odin's wife. Toki. The Wano of the present day is nothing like it used to be. Kaido had destroyed villages, built factories over them, polluted water, and enslaved citizens. So the vassals, led by Kinemon, set out to find powerful warriors to aid in their revenge against Kaido. And after a lot of getting hoed, Kinemon eventually ran into the Straw Hats and Law on Punk Hazard. Luckily, at the same time, Luffy and Law made an alliance to take down Kaido as well. To quickly summarize, 10 years of storytelling, Doflamingo gets clapped by Luffy, the Straw Hats go to Zoe and create the Ninja Pirate Mink Samurai Alliance, Luffy makes Big Mom mad which causes her to side with Kaido, and finally on Wano, Kinemon makes a plan to ambush the Beast Pirates on the night of the Fire Festival. So with the forces of thousands of vengeful samurai, the Minks, the Japanese Mafia, and three top pirate crews, the raid group set out for Onigashima. Onigashima is Kaido's main base of operations, I don't know if I mentioned that yet. However, the Beast Pirates not only had 20,000 members of their crew, but also 10,000 samurai that worked under Orochi. The battle was over 5 to 1, not to mention Kaido, who honestly could have 1v5,000 the whole raid group if he was at the main gate or something. The raid forces decided to sneak in, disguising themselves as Beast Pirates members. But Luffy being Luffy, yeah, you know how this goes. Despite that, they did manage to get a good jump on the crew. Most of the Beast Pirates didn't even know what was going on until the vassals decided to do their Storm 4 ultimate team attack on Kaido. That's where the battle really started, and oh my god, the raid was crazy. We get to watch two Emperors of the Sea fight seriously, the vassals get their revenge, so many different power-ups, so many new techniques, and it, it's just all so amazing. Roof Piece by itself is basically just the culmination of 10 years of storytelling. Putting aside my personal opinions though, for most of the battle, the Beast Pirates did have the upper hand. That is, until the MVP of the raid decided to show. Many people will say that it was Luffy, Momo, Yamato, but no. The MVP of the raid is an 8 year old girl. This kid is named Tama and with her powers and hella setup, she managed to turn all of the gifters against Kaido. This pivotal event, along with some other things, put the battle at 9,000 in favor of the raid and 16,000 for the beast pirates. And then, chapter after chapter, the Tobiropo were defeated. 
Then came the All-Stars, and then Big Mom. However, everybody knew that none of that would matter if Kaido didn't fall. Of course, nobody could accomplish this besides Luffy. The same man who got clapped by Kaido three times, died, and awakened his devil fruit. It literally took a god to defeat Kaido, and we don't even know if he's dead. However, what we do know is that the Beast Pirates are no more. After Kaido, the strongest creature in the world, was defeated. Like the Big Mom Pirates lost their captain and a commander, they're fine, but the Beast Pirates? Nah, you can't come back from that shit. Honestly, the Beast Pirates are probably my second favorite Yonko crew, and it's mostly because they had a whole four year arc to get fleshed out, but I don't know, some of these designs are cold as fuck. I mean, Kaido is literally 2,400 pounds of straight muscle, and King? Bro, oh my gosh. Mask on or mask off, this dude looks fucking fire. No pun intended, but he's also black, so, you know, that gets extra points from me. Jack, Queen, and the Toby Ropo are awesome as well. I mean, Queen is just an example of like an Oda type character where his design is very goofy, but coupled with his personality, it makes an amazing character. And the fights that all of these characters had, I mean seriously, I cannot wait for Zoro vs King to be animated. And the panel in Act 1 where Kaido one-shots Luffy with a Thunder Bagua, that, I don't know, it just, <laughs> it's so cool to me. I don't know why that panel sticks out to me so much. I might be biased towards all of these things because, I mean, Wano was the first arc that I got to read. The raid specifically is like, those were the first few chapters where I really started reading One Piece. And I've been having to read the raid like literally every video because of this power scaling shit. So a lot of these designs have grown on me. But that's the end of the video. And while I would say that the Big Mom Pirates are next week, I'm fucking tired of making promises and not living up to them. So uh, yeah, whatever happens, happens. Bye.